This revision video is the fourth in a series about the A-level chemistry topic of acids and bases. In this video, we define a weak acid and base and examine how to use the equilibrium constant Ka to calculate either the pH of the acid if we know its concentration or its concentration if we know its pH. We don't go into buffers and reactions of weak acids in this video because that will get a separate video of its own. When weak acids and weak bases dissolve in water to form aqueous solutions, they only dissociate slightly. And we've said before that this is a much better definition than the one we used for GCSE, which implied that something dissociating 99% of the time was a weak acid because it hadn't fully dissociated. Examples of weak acids include carbonic acid, ethanoic acid and citric acid, and weak bases include ammonium hydroxide and hydrazine. You've already met some other examples of equilibrium constants like Kc and Kw, the ionic product of water, which we met in video number three. As you know, when an acid dissolves in water, the undissociated acid splits up to make hydrogen ions and anions. So we can write a special version of Kc, which we call Ka for acids, which looks a bit like this. We've got the square brackets to represent concentration. And as with all these equilibrium constants, the products always go on the top. Here, the A can be any anion. So for instance, if we were going to look at ethanoic acid, which splits up to make an ethanoate ion and a hydrogen ion, then we can represent this with a Ka that looks like this. And this is going to allow us to do calculations and to work out what the pH of a weak acid will be when it dissolves. The weaker the acid is, the smaller the Ka value will be. Any Ka value smaller than one implies a weak acid because it tells you that there must be a higher concentration of the undissociated acid than of the ions that it breaks up into. Ka values are usually written in standard form and so you're expecting to see a negative power of 10 for a weak acid. Strong acids tend not to have a published Ka value because Ka will tend to infinity, so it isn't a meaningful number. If you're working with a strong acid, then calculating pH is really straightforward. I can assume that if I have a one molar solution of hydrochloric acid, then I have a one molar solution of hydrogen ions, because all of the hydrochloric acid has dissociated, it's split apart. But if I'm working with a weak acid, then I can't make that same assumption, because not all of the acid that I've added into that solution will have dissociated, and so I don't have a one-to-one -one ratio between the acid and the hydrogen ions. This is why I need my acid equilibrium constant, Ka. Before we start using Ka to calculate pHs, we're going to make two key assumptions. The first one is that assuming that we've got a pure weak acid that hasn't had anything added to it, it hasn't been reacted with a base, then the concentration of the hydrogen ions and the anions is going to be the same as each other because they both come from one acid particle that's split apart. And so rather than having both of them in my expression, I can simplify it down and I can just use hydrogen ions twice. So now on the right hand side of my screen, I've got hydrogen ions squared. Remember, you're able to do this for a weak acid that hasn't reacted with anything else. But when we get on to sort of neutralization reactions later, then you won't be able to do this. The second assumption that I'm going to make is that because the amount of dissociation is really quite small, the initial concentration of the undissociated acid is constant. So if I've started out and my concentration of ethanoic acid has been 0.2 molar, then even though I know it will have decreased by a tiny, tiny amount as some of it dissociates, I just ignore that and I just carry on using that concentration of 0.2. Now let's look at some questions to see how we can calculate pH using Ka. I've got two worked examples for us to do together and then five for you to practice on your own. In this first question, we're asked to calculate the pH of a 0.02 molar solution of ethanoic acid given that its Ka is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. My first step is to write an expression for Ka. As we said on the previous slide, because this is a weak acid that hasn't reacted with anything else, it's not part of a buffer and it hasn't been neutralised at all, I'm able to use the concentration of hydrogen ions squared without having a separate value for the anions. I can now substitute in the numbers from my question. So in the question they've given me a value for Ka and they've given me a value for the concentration of ethanoic acid. I can rearrange this expression now to find a value for hydrogen ions. So my hydrogen ions will be the square root of the Ka multiplied by the concentration of the undissociated acid. That gives me an answer of 5.831 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed. 
Now that I have the concentration of hydrogen ions, I can calculate the pH. pH, as we know, is negative log base 10 of the concentration of the hydrogen ions, which gives me 3.2342605. But remember, I always give my pH value to two decimal places, so my final answer will be 3.23. Here's another example of the same type of question, only this time we've got propanoic acid with a concentration of 0.01, and its Ka value is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5. Again, I want to start out by writing an expression for Ka. Here it is written out in full, and then here's our simplified version where we use the hydrogen ions twice. I know from the question that the value of that expression is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5. So I can work out that the concentration of hydrogen ions will be the square root of Ka multiplied by the concentration. That gives me a hydrogen ion concentration of 3.6742 times 10 to the minus 4. I can then use that to calculate pH by taking the negative log base 10. That gives me an answer of 3.43483312. But again, remember, I always give pH to two decimal places. So my final answer is 3.43. Now it's time for you to have a go. Pause the video and write down a calculation for each of these five questions. They're all ethanoic acid, so they all have the same Ka value, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. In each instance, you need to write an expression for Ka, solve to find the concentration of hydrogen ions, and then calculate the pH. To work out the concentration of hydrogen ions, I need to take the square root of Ka multiplied by the original concentration. So in this instance, I do 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 0 0.100 and then square root my answer. And so I get a hydrogen ion concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3. I can then use that to calculate a pH by taking the negative log base 10 and I get an answer of 2.88 to two decimal places. For question two, my hydrogen ion concentration was 2.92 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives me a pH of 2.54. For question three, my hydrogen ion concentration is 2.06 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives me a pH of 2.69. A concentration of 7.71 times 10 to the minus 4 gives a pH of 3.11. And finally, a hydrogen ion concentration of 4.32 times 10 to the minus 3 gives a pH of 2.36. Now let's look at how we can rearrange this Ka expression so that we can calculate concentration from pH rather than pH from concentration. In this question, I'm trying to calculate the concentration of ethanoic acid when it has a pH of 5.50 and Ka is the same that it always is because that's the Ka for ethanoic acid. Again, I'm going to start by writing out an expression for Ka. And now I'm going to rearrange this to make the concentration of ethanoic acid, the thing that I actually want to know, the subject. Before I can calculate this number, I need to know what the concentration of hydrogen ions is, and this is what I'm going to use the pH for. We already know that we can calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions by putting 10 to the power of the negative pH value. So here I'm going to do 10 to the power of minus 5.5, which gives me a concentration of 3.16228 times 10 to the minus 6. I can now put that back into my Ka expression, along with the Ka value from the question. So the concentration of ethanoic acid will be 3.16228 times 10 to the minus 6, squared, divided by Ka. That gives me an answer of 5.88 times 10 to the minus 7. Here's a second example of the same type. Can we calculate the concentration of propanoic acid when the pH is 4.20 and the Ka is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5? I need to start out with a Ka expression, and here I've actually just written the rearranged one straight away. Again, I want to work out the concentration of hydrogen ions, which I do by putting 10 to the power of the negative pH. That gives me a concentration of 6.30957 times 10 to the minus 5. I've written out quite a lot of numbers here because I want to leave my rounding as late as I possibly can. It's okay if you just want to write down the first couple of numbers and then use the answer button on your calculator, but you need to make sure you're using as many of those numbers as you can for as long as possible. I can substitute that number and the value of Ka from the question back into my expression to give me a concentration of propanoic acid of 2.94894 times 10 to the minus 4 which I've recorded here for my final answer to three significant figures, because that's the number of significant figures that have been used in the question. Here are five calculations for you to have a go at. 
Remember, for each question, you need to use the pH value to work out the concentration of hydrogen ions, write an expression for Ka and rearrange that, and then substitute in the value of Ka from the question and the concentration of hydrogen ions that you've worked out to find out what the concentration of the solution will be. For the first question, the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be 0.316, and when we substitute that in, we get a final concentration of 1.85 moles per decimeter cubed. For question two, our hydrogen ions are 0.1, and therefore the acid is 0.185. Then our hydrogen ion concentration is 0.0389, which gives me a final concentration of 0.0280, and so on and so forth. There's one final twist we need to look at before we go, and that's the use of pKa. Sometimes in a question, they won't give you the Ka value. They'll give you something called the pKa instead. The relationship between Ka and pKa is exactly the same as the relationship between the concentration of hydrogen ions and pH. So if you know how to calculate between hydrogen ions and pH, which you obviously do by this point, then you know how to convert between Ka and pKa. To work out pKa, you take the negative log of Ka, and to work out Ka, which to be honest, you're more likely to be doing, you do 10 to the power of the negative pKa value. Let's have a look at one question where we do this. In this question, we're again going to calculate concentration based on pH, but this time, rather than being given the Ka value, we've been given the pKa value. And to be fair, it is a much nicer number to look at, but we're going to need to convert it back before we can do our final calculation. So to begin with, here's a chemical equation that represents this equilibrium as butanoic acid dissociates into anions and hydrogen ions. And here's my expression for Ka. And then we simplify it. So again, because this is just a weak acid and it hasn't undergone any kind of neutralisation reaction, it's safe for me to assume that the concentration of hydrogen ions and anions is the same. And so I can just use hydrogen ions twice. Now I rearrange that Ka expression to make the concentration of butanoic acid the subject. Before I can calculate this, I need to know what the concentration of hydrogen ions is using pH and what the Ka value is using pKa. Ka is 10 to the power of the negative pKa value, so 10 to the power of minus 4.82, which gives me a Ka of 1.514 times 10 to the minus 5. I can do the same operation to work out the concentration of hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions is 10 to the power of the negative pH, so 10 to the power of minus 2.80, which gives me 1.585 times 10 to the minus 3. If I substitute in those two numbers, I get a final concentration of 0.166 moles per decimeter cubed. That's it for part four of the acids and bases topic, and I hope that you found that a useful video. Thank you very much for watching, and if you did find it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more acids and bases videos coming soon.